Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. Over the years, I've accumulated words I really like just because they're fun to say. I'm betting you have several of your own. Words such as brouhaha, that one makes me laugh every time. Or lollygag, I smile at that one too. How about blithering, as in Walton is a blithering fool. To be called blithering can be withering, but enough dithering, I like it anyway. Doppelganger and kerfuffle are two more. Given a choice, I'd much rather be involved in a kerfuffle than an argument. If I have a doppelganger somewhere, I'm sorry for his burden, but it's not my fault. Sometimes words are fun words because they're no longer used much. Hornswoggle is one. Long before the word scam became part of our daily lives, hornswoggle meant the same thing. But until just now, when's the last time you heard it or used it? The same is true for snollygoster. Definition? A politician who is guided by personal advantage rather than by consistent, respectable principles. Hmm, maybe it's time to bring that one back. For sure it meets the fun-to-say test, and perhaps it's never been more relevant. You could say the same for megalomania. Fun-to-say and loaded with relevance. How about cattywampus or doohickey? Here's another personal favorite, diphthong. I'm told the phrase, no highway cowboy, contains five distinct diphthongs. I don't know how to count them, and I don't care. I just like saying diphthong. Ask an English teacher. I've also collected words I don't like and try not to use because they seem a bit pretentious or unnecessary. One is albeit. I'm compelled to mention it here, albeit reluctantly. I have others, insofar. Is that one word or three? It's a first cousin to inasmuch. I don't care for either one or either three. Tantamount, really? When Lerner and Lowe wrote the Broadway musical Brigadoon, did they write it's almost tantamount to being in love? Don't think so. That would have been tantamount to heresy. Angry lovers of musical theater might have forced Lerner and Lowe into early retirement. Sometimes a pretentious word works perfectly in a musical. Take splendiferous. There's a song in the musical Chicago that includes this line. Give them a show that's so splendiferous, row after row will grow vociferous. See, there's no better way to say it than the way Billy Flynn did. What about unwords with no commonly used opposite meaning, such as unwieldy? Can something be wieldy? Yeah, but practically speaking, have you ever used it? My SUV is extremely wieldy. It just sounds weird. Any idea how many words will be expended in the presidential campaign? You might as well try to count the grains of sand on a beach. Most of them will be mean-spirited, and some will be used incorrectly. Most politicians do a decent job delivering speeches written for them by someone else, but struggle when they have to improvise. I cringed recently when I read the comment of a state legislator out west who said this in response to a reporter's question. I can't not think of it not happening. I guess if you wade through that mess, you can figure out what the guy was trying to say, despite the apparent triple negative. Maybe not, not, not. Well, that's it. Class dismissed, albeit reluctantly. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 544 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org slash life.